This is that Lee Enfield number one Mark III. And you'll hear people say how this was the fastest bolt action rifle of World War II. Um, you hear about uh, British soldiers doing the mad minute, how many rounds they can get off in a, in a, in a minute. And it's just amazing speed uh, for a bolt action rifle. Um, let's take a look at this, see what makes it so fast, and we'll compare it to a rifle and we'll see what makes that so slow. rifle will be comparing that number one Mark III uh, Lee Enfield II. This is a Mosin Nagant. It shoots a 7.62 by 54R. Um, another bolt action rifle. These are designed about the same time as that number one Mark III. Um, both shooting a very similar round. You have that, that rim cartridge. Um, a lot of people consider this maybe one of the worst bolt action rifles of World War II. You hear people say, oh my god, it was terrible. The bolt was horrible. Um, and let's see what, what makes this so terrible. All right, and we'll compare it to that number one Mark III. Maybe that Mark III is great. Maybe this is just your average rifle. First thing we're going to look at is the overall cartridge length. Um, this is a 7.62 by 54R here on the left, and that's the 303 British there on the right. And just to make sure that it's a fair comparison, not one's a short action versus a long action, um, you'll see the 7.62 by 54R, and R stands for rim. They're actually both rimmed cartridges. Both of these rounds were designed in the late 1800s. And if you see, that 303 British is actually slightly longer. Advantage that Mosin they got. One of the third, first things we know is about the design of the rifle is look at the location of the bolt handle in comparison to where the uh, trigger is. If you're manipulating this uh, Lee Enfield, you can fire this weapon, cock, and then when you come back down, your finger is right there, ready to go back down onto the trigger. All right, there's no extra movement. All right. I, do, I, would, I would fire around, lift up, and, it's in my, and as I come down, that bolt comes down and my finger is right there ready to get back onto the trigger. After I fire the round, my finger is right ready, really close to the bolt handle. All right, so the relationship of the trigger to the bolt handle is going to affect our speed. Let's compare that to the Mosin Nagant. If I look at the Mosin Nagant, my trigger is back here. It's quite a distance from that bolt handle. So after I was to fire this weapon, I reach up, have to move forward, and as I let go, I have to come all the way back, find my trigger again. Fire the round, reach forward several inches, grab the bolt handle, and come back several inches. So there's extra movement just in my hand reaching from the trigger to the bolt handle. Again, anything extra is going to slow down my time. I got my high school protractor out here. We're going to measure how many degrees this bolt has to turn to unlock. So with this Mosin Nagant, and just by its design, you see that straight bolt handle is just about horizontal when I have the, the rifle you know, vertical. It's going to take a full 90 degrees to open that bolt and pull it all the way back. So about a 90 degree throw as I lift that bolt handle. All right, just about horizontal, just about vertical. All right, so about a 90 degree throw. Let's take my, my high school protractor here. Let's take a look at this Lee Enfield. Try to match the angle of that bolt handle. And as it comes up, it's only about a 70 degree throw. So about 70 degrees to open that bolt, back, forward, 70 degrees down. Another aspect to look at what's gonna slow a, a bolt action rifle down I have this ruler, just, I'm just holding on to it. But the distance that we have to go to unlock, fully re pull that bolt all the way to the rear, and move it all the way forward again, it's about four and a half inches with the Mosin in the gun. This bolt is going to travel four and a half inches back, four and a half inches forward. All right, so that's quite a bit of travel. If we do the same thing with this Lee Enfield, and I, okay, it's just about three and a half inches. It's not moving nearly as far to let that round come out of the magazine and then feed it into the chamber. So it's almost an inch less coming back and almost an inch less coming forward. Those two inches are going to make up a lot of time. So it's a shorter action 
even though we saw that the, the round, that 303 bridge round was actually longer, it's a shorter action to chamber a round. Another characteristic you're gonna see when we compare these two rifles is this Mosin Nagant. We're gonna, we're gonna cock this bolt as we open, as we open, as we, as, as, as we lift, as we lift this lever, that's where we're cocking our bolt, okay? There's no momentum, there's no uh, assist from gravity. I'm just gonna lift, cock it, open, close it, all right? It's gonna be quick to close, and once I, once I fire, you can see, it's gonna be kinda, I have to lift, cock the bolt, go against that spring pressure, open it, close it. Yes, yeah, ready to fire. With this Lee Enfield, this is now a cock on closing. So just the opposite. I can lift this very easily, because there's no spring pressure, open the bolt completely. Now when I go to close it, I've got a little bit of momentum, a little bit of inertia, and I can push as I'm pushing forward. Now I'm gonna cock that firing pin and cock that mainspring. So a cock on closing. So some people say it's, that's a big advantage leverage-wise. Another characteristic of this design, something to think about, is how thin this barrel, how lightweight it is at the end of this rifle. So under recoil, I could get a lot more muzzle climb. It would take more time to get back onto target. I could fire this weapon, recoil up, come back down, reacquire my sights. And it's going to take a little bit more time. That's going to slow my rate of fire down. If we look at this Lee Enfield, look at the amount of hardware we have up front. I have this bayonet lug. I've got these big protective ears of my, for my front sight, this big bull nose, this big piece of steel. So under recoil, it's going to be a little front heavy and I won't get as much muzzle climb as I fire it. So I can shoot a little bit of recoil, come right back on sight, cycle, and I get back on target quicker. That'll increase my rate of fire also. You'll hear people say that, oh my God, those Mohs and Nagants are just terrible. It's, you'll feel, it's grinding metal on metal. I've heard people say that. Um, I actually heard someone describe the bolt action as gravelly, and that's not true at all. Um, okay, it's like every other bolt action. It's the bolt sliding against the receiver. You've got the lugs going in that, through that race. Um, it's not slow mechanically. It's slow in design. It's slow in certain features. Um, it's not a terrible bolt action. Um, if you if you see something, oh my God, you know it's poorly machined. Well, maybe so, but that doesn't affect the opening and closing of the bolt. All right. So this may not be a, a terrible rifle. It's probably, it's it's actually a pretty decent rifle. They're, they're they're kind of fun to shoot. It's not. It is pretty smooth. It's not a terrible bolt action rifle. But when we compare it to the number one Mark III, this Lee Enfield, it's a shorter throw. It's a shorter lift of that bolt handle. It's shorter distance from finger to, from trigger to bolt. All right, they we're not getting the muzzle climb. Our sights are almost identical, but getting back on target and aligning those sights quicker back onto target, that's where the speed's coming. Okay, much, much quicker than that Mosin Nagant. It's not that the Mosin Nagant is terrible, just a lot more ergonomic design here in the, the Enfield. Okay, this is just a better bolt action rifle. Better in design, better in function. All right, the Mad Minute, yeah, it's real, it's real, okay? You can go fast with a Lee Enfield. The Mosin Nagant is not terrible, all right? It's a bolt action rifle and it was the rifle of its time. Um, but this is more of your, this is more of a workhorse. Uh, this is your, your plow horse and that Lee Enfield, that was more of a race horse. They're just built different.